All right, hello and welcome everyone to today's sales enablement training. My name is William. We will also have uh, Dan on the call today. And we are excited to share with everyone how to generate comparison pages on our website. So I'll walk through the, the technical how you actually do it. And Dan will walk through some of our strategy behind it. Uh, and our, our goal here is really that everybody can contribute. Everybody on the sales team, everybody on the marketing team, everybody in the company, even our competitors uh, to be able to contribute. So I hope that even our competitors watch this video and learn how to edit our comparison pages and submit a merge request. So I'll let Dan talk more about the strategy. With that, I am going to try to share my screen in turning off Notification. All right, hey, William, maybe I could start by sharing my screen and then we could switch over to you. Let's do that. Uh, Dan, you, you take it first and then I'll come in after you. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, that's my whole screen. That's not what we wanted to share. Hold on. To share this one. Okay, great. So you should be seeing our homepage. So, what we're excited to talk to you about and share with you today is uh, is our strategy and about comparisons and competing uh, and tools in the environment that we operate in, uh, which is, as you probably understand, is a very large space since we're talking about the entire DevOps lifecycle. We're starting on this page because I want to show you how to get to it. Um, first, you've probably seen this great graphic that's been hanging out on our homepage for a little bit. And it's been cycling uh, different uh, uh, competitors or, or tools in the environment that we compete in in, any, in these different stages. Uh, clicking on any of these will bring you to a comparison, a feature by feature comparison of those tools. But I'm not going to do that here because I want to take you to the main page for that, which is under Why GitLab and Compare. Yay, we're on the front menu, top menu. If you go there, uh, there is a revamped page that has, first of all, a set a, a, a straight menu of all of the comparisons that we do have. Um, it is filterable and uh, by category. There's a little bug there, but we do have a lot more categories than that. Oops, excuse me. Uh, but what's really cool is you can also see that similar graphic by stage what GitLab plays in, which as we know is all of them, and then all of the competitors, uh, all of the competing uh, information that we have uh, in each of those stages. So for example, if I wanted to get more information on how we compare to, uh, to Bitbucket, in this case, Bitbucket Data Center, uh, I can go there and I can get the lowdown feature by feature information uh, about, about that, uh, about how we compare to what they have. Now, one thing uh, you'll notice is that uh, we don't have a separation here uh, that you're comparing GitLab uh, Premium versus GitLab Ultimate versus et cetera. Uh, we're comparing everything first and foremost on the right side here to GitLab Ultimate uh, or Gold. And this, uh, as it's always been, this matrix on the side here tells you which of our different tiers uh, and versions uh, actually has this, this feature. So. Uh, for example, we could see that related issues is not part of the lowest tier that we have uh, of, for GitLab. So I'm going to pop back up and uh, we, we have lots of different um, uh, comparisons. You can switch right from here. Um, but what I really want to show you is um, in addition to this is that we've we've been also collecting data so there's this notion of a battle card right which is it's not all just about knowing which features um, a, a, a tool has it's also about understanding the pricing um, any anecdotes that might be out there that you're discovering while you're talking to folks uh, or that we see in twitter or um, uh, information summary about the tool itself and so uh, those we have been collecting under uh, the space called DevOps tools. Uh, and we're in process of strategies, we're merging these together so that you'll get access to all of that from the comparison pages. So as an example, we have Atlassian Jira and there's a page here that has uh, summary information, comments and anecdotes, uh, pointers to resources about uh, to their sites, um, information about integrations and pricing. 
uh, and a pointer to the comparison page and some additional information. So this information is now being pulled in. Uh, we're in the process of pulling that in um, to, uh, to these pages. I think I might have gotten the wrong one here. Okay, so uh, let me let me do that differently. It wasn't Jira that had it, it was uh, Jenkins. So we have a lot of this similar information for Jenkins. And that now appears on the top of this single page. So when you go to do get information about Jenkins, for example, uh, we have all of that same anecdotal information. Um, this was uh, just recently the, uh, the Jenkins uh, shifting gears note. And here's a summary of what we pulled out of it that uh, this is from the conversation that happened in, uh, in Slack and also just an interpretation uh, on our part about uh, valuable points uh, from those discussions that you can use as zingers or that, that can help you as you're um, combating or discussing uh, about this uh, competitor or tool. Um, we've also got the resources and the pricing and then all the feature comparisons as before. So all of these pages, uh, that are here and there are several uh, for example microsoft tfs has a whole bunch of information all of that's migrating over and will soon be uh, available through the comparison page uh, the other thing about that that i want to point out is um, to talk a little bit about the comparisons uh, right now we do have a lot of comparisons that are pretty low level um, things uh, and some higher level things for example we have cycle analytics but we may have also um, something uh, to the effect of, uh, you know, can spin up a new project from uh, from your branch or something. Um, that is not necessarily, it, it is a feature or part of a feature, but it's not necessarily a uh, the right level. So we're working on um, on reshuffling these and bringing that level up uh, in the in the uh, comparisons, uh, as well as recategorizing these so that they fall under the categories. Um, for example, multiple tools fall under multiple things. So there may be a CI fold here under Jenkins and a CD fold separately so that we can group that information together. So that's all work that's going on. Um, and I uh, just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. So with that, I'll hand it over to William who can share with you how you can contribute to this because as you can imagine, there's a lot of data to collect and you guys are out there and you're hearing things. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we're capturing all of that information uh, and so you contributing to this information is, is an important part of how we're going to do this. Um, as William mentioned, part of the strategy is, yeah, it, we really want all this public. I think there's been some discussion and concern about, hey, this is our battle card. This is our like, you know, prize collected information. Um, think about it this way. There's two parts. One, and this has already happened, competitors look at this and they say, hey, that's not right, right? We actually had um, uh, Sonatype come uh, uh, to us about that. Um, and uh, Circle CI, uh, and the result of that is great. Help us correct it and get the right information in there. And that's fantastic because that means they're helping us build these pages out as well. Uh, and what this does is having this level of information available to everyone means that when you go into a situation where you're competing against three of these other tools in a bake off, for example, um, we've leveled the playing field because everybody has this information, right? which means it's, it's out there and can be used um, uh, for more than just our angle um, to, to help uh, lay down the, the, the playing field or change the playing field. So with that, uh, I will stop sharing and turn it over to William. Yeah, I completely uh, agree, Dan. Something that I, I chat a lot about, or I, you know, with Mark Ruggie, or I, he, I see Mark share often, is that uh, more and more in sales deals, uh, you know, our customers are doing their web research up front. And so if you can imagine when you get on a call with that prospect and you want to give them all this information about GitLab, uh, the more information we get on our website, uh, the more information they have ahead of that call and the easier you're making your job on that call, allowing you to hone in on positioning, learning exactly what their pain points are and having a consultative expertise discussion with them. So with that, I'll give a, a quick training here on how exactly do you update a battle card? So uh, of course we go here into our handbook and uh, this is on the website, uh, website handbook. 
so uh, slash handbook marketing website. And if you scroll down to uh, updating the marketing website and you see there is a section here called creating a comparison page. So here is a step-by-step -step, uh, instructions and really it, it's only about two or three steps. You basically are gonna edit the features.yaml file and then uh, under the competitor section, you add a tool. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. I'm gonna click to open up this file and uh, it's gonna open up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open that up in the web IDE. Give that a moment to load. Uh, and you can read through and follow these instructions step by step, but it's basically adding a, uh, a tool name. Uh, this we call a, a unique idea. So I think uh, you're off of uh, mute, Dan. Oh, sorry. Um, so, so this would be a unique ID. It should be a all, all lowercase. Uh, we call this snake case when you use a uh, underscore like that. Uh, so for example, Travis underscore CI. And then you just add a name, a logo, uh, what categories this uh, tool plays in. Uh, and then you can add either a summary in Markdown, just like you would update any uh, handbook page, or an include file. And so there's, there's two ways to add that, uh, as Dan called it, the, the battle card info. And I'm going to walk you through it live right now. Uh, or I'm going to walk you through it live in a second, because the only other part is then in the features section, under individual features, the way that you get it to show up on that page, as uh, Dan was showing on our homepage, um, you know, let's say, for example, uh, we go to the, uh, it's taking a moment to load, or my, you know, like, let's say the Bitbucket page here, the way these features appear, whether on this page, is whether you set it to true, false, or partially. So you can see in the text file, it says free CICD with personal runners. And this is inside of the YAML file. And then the way that appears, it says free CICD with personal runners. And it has a little partially note because uh, Bitbucket does this, but really only partially while we support it fully. So there's a uh, doesn't support it, uh, does support it, and partially. Uh, which is the true, false, or partially. So to show you what that looks like, uh, went into features.yaml, I opened up my web IDE, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update that JIRA page. So I'm gonna look for the JIRA section, uh, which is right here, and we can see there's a name and there's a logo, but there's no summary yet. So instead of summary, I'm gonna add this uh, included file parameter, right? And the file that I want to include is actually from this DevOps tools. So kind of as Dan mentioned, here's a page that exists today. We're gonna deprecate this page. All of this info is gonna go into the comparison section. And then at some point in the future, we'll rename the comparison section to DevOps tools, but for now, this is kind of like, uh, you can get to it directly from the URL, but I don't think we link to it. So I'm gonna go to this JIRA page where we happen to have quite a bit of info. And I'm just gonna take that path right there, and I'm gonna add it to the file. And I think that it's actually gonna be slash index slash HTML, I believe is the file, yes. So slash index.html. And for reference, I'm just gonna check myself with the Jenkins uh, section where I did it include index.html.md. So I'm gonna add that to my Jira, Jira section, dot md. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm telling the website, hey, this, uh, this file, wherever I put it, sorry. <laughs> this file right here, I want you to take this file and import the content onto this other page. And that's what this include file does. So if you have the content somewhere else, you can just literally include it. Or I could use summary, and I could just write my summary using Markdown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
commit this and uh, create a new branch in a merge request. And it's going to pop up my merge request here. I'm just going to submit that MR for now. And so this is exactly what you can do. Literally open up features.yaml, edit a section, add some content there, or add to the summary, or create a summary if one does not exist, or the content's already there, include a page. And then just create an MR. You can tag myself or Dan for help on, on uh, updating that MR or merging it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this actually looks like. So, so everything I've showed so far is something you can do and should do. And then you just wait for the pipeline to finish executing to get a review app. This part, I'm now going to uh, expedite showing you the result because uh, I don't want to wait for the review app to finish all the testing. That stuff is important before we deploy because we want to test everything. But uh, this part is uh, you don't need to do. So basically, I'm just going to uh, check out the branch locally, unless, of course, you have a local environment set up. Uh, and I am going to start middleman on my local environment. And sometimes this takes anywhere from, you know, say 20 to uh, 30 seconds here, depending on the, uh, the environment. But uh, I can open up, uh, what would it be? It would be under source. No, nope, actually it's under data. Data features, features.yaml. And so we can, while middleman is booting up, we can uh, inspect the file that I pulled down locally. And we can see here that we have Jira, sorry. So there's my include file, which is great. It's exactly what I want to uh, introspect. And then let's open up the uh, local host. Looks like it's taking just a few more minutes to uh, pull up the file. But essentially, this is the process that I wanted to outline, is that you literally can go here to the handbook. There are step-by-step -step instructions. If you just want to create it from scratch, or if the data is already there, you know, for example, this is why we, we want to loop in the whole sales team. And we hear this all the time where um, we're sharing knowledge between each other, but it doesn't get disseminated. Uh, I hear a lot from Alex that uh, his team would love to get that info as well. And so uh, by sharing that info in this file, you disseminate to the whole company and everyone and to your prospects as well, as I mentioned. Um, so that's kind of the benefit of doing it this way. And the idea is that uh, you don't even need to do it net new. So some of these are net new, like we don't have a comparison for Spinnaker. There's anyone on the call literally right now or watching this video and you're thinking, well, I know something about Spinnaker and I can write like a one sentence summary of how Spinnaker compares to GitLab. Go ahead and edit this file, pop in a little summary just like this and uh, submit an MR, and we can all fill this out together and have a, have a robust comparison section. And what I'm going to show now is I'm going to go to our compare site, which is now loaded uh, locally on my machine. And I'm going to go to the uh, Jira battle card, and crossing our fingers and praying to the demo gods, uh, nothing like doing it live, we now see that it has pulled in the info from that other file. Whereas you see when Dan pulled it up earlier, there wasn't any info here, uh, I believe. Um, so let's, uh, there might be some troubleshooting or some debugging because clearly this has like more content than this has. So I need to troubleshoot a little bit to figure out why my, uh, why my file import didn't work, but it. I think you started with slash. But, um, but, but could you jump back to that other page? Because I want to make sure that, that everyone's aware of this as well. Um, uh, you're saying in here. Yeah. This should be like that? Yeah. Awesome. At least, at least compared to your other, uh, your other one. You're the man. OK, yeah, which page let's, do you let's want to work. Um, the, uh, the DevOps tools page. So one of the reasons we set this up originally, yeah, that one right there, is because this is just markdown. 
right? And making a change to this or adding an anecdote or a note or something that you learned about the product, um, the, the, the competitor, uh, is very simple. Uh, and so please don't let complexity of this stop you from adding. We want to capture that information. And if you can add it here, that's great. The goal is to have all of these linked in, uh, like what uh, uh, what William is showing. Um, if it's not yet, then please go for it and do it. Um, but uh, our goal is to have all of these linked in so that we can ease, you can easily add things to this, uh, and those will show up on the uh, the main comparison page. Yeah, for all for all intents and purposes, you can ignore this section of the website. We're going to deprecate it, but it it gives you a. Uh, it gives you a format, you know? So if all you have is a summary, pop in a summary. If you have some anecdotes, add that. And it's really easy to add those right into this YAML file. For example, you can see here for Bamboo, I've added the summary and you can just put that markdown right in that file. You don't need to deal with any other files. Um, looks like I have some troubleshooting to do on this, on my include, um, but I think the general premise is sound. So with that, uh, any, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, stop the YouTube video. We link to the instructions. Obviously, if there's some bugs, I'll troubleshoot those, and I will update the instructions. Uh, so even after this video goes live, check out the handbook. The instructions will be there. What I'd like to do is just stop the video, and then we'll do some uh, live Q&A. So thank you, everyone, for uh, participating today.